And we have Matt. Hello. Do we want to call that quorum for a quick update? Sure. Um, who do we have from on the quick side? You guys want to? Actually, I'll I'll scoot out, and you guys can uh, okay. actually huddle in front of the laptop. So we have Dan and Ben here from the Google Quick team. Or, uh, hey, one one sec. What? Do you want to take the quick room or? Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. You just join over there. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, yeah. Do you uh, do you do you both want to just give a little status update? I guess that would be great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I can start about uh, like what do we have done and uh, what's going on now. Um, like right now, uh, quick we finished all the platform implementation, um, and uh, we we are able to build all the quick core libraries, uh, as it as external dependency, and um, um on the like uh. And on the quick pipeline, um, the stream uh, between the uh, between the Envoy and the quick stream interaction, like we have the uh, Envoy or we have Envoy buffer to quick mem slice conversion, and uh, uh, on the quick uh, quick listener side, uh, we have uh, receive message, uh, we have time system, and uh, we have uh, uh, alarm scheduling. And uh, we have uh, a proof source, but it's a fake leak implementation, which uh, which uh, allow us to, which can still allow us to uh, do integration tests, but we will eventually need a real one. Um, and also, uh, yeah, this is a thing that we have done, and uh, um, and also I'm working on the send message uh, to allow sending source uh, source address. Uh, and also so can I actually just recap that for people less familiar with the quick stack yeah I think I think essentially like part of, part of the, the way the quick library was built was for this you know neutral platform thing I think Matt's familiar with it too yeah. so essentially yeah. there were a bunch of utils for doing addresses the way that quick you know doing like an address wrapper and alarms and all that stuff so that's basically done um, and then some of the basic utilities are done um, and so so Dan's basically working now on like the and and then on the larger building blocks to get things working. Okay. Uh, so we have like the fake proof source, which again, isn't gonna do real cert validation, but you know, that'll obviously happen next. Um, and then and then what are the other major chunks you're doing now? Uh, I'm doing, right now I'm doing like uh, a send message to allow sending source address. Yep. And, and also uh, working on building the uh, quick HTTP library, uh, uh, which uh, still depends on some uh, uh, upstream fix um, uh, because we depend on speedy code and uh, uh, like we haven't really um, uh, making the code uh, mm -hmm. yeah code uh, workable for Envoy yet. Got it. Mm. Okay. And do we feel like we have a good plan of how we're going to do the actual integration with the HTTP connection manager, or is that TBD once we figure out all of the plumbing stuff with the library? I, I think the yeah so 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 the, the HCM codec stuff. Um, Basically, how we want to do the the monolithic, um, like quick codec. Uh, quick codec. Uh, I actually long time ago I had a a, a kind of change uh, to uh, mimic that, but back then we don't have uh, the quick library yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's basically just the a uh, document document about interface like uh, well like here we should send a quick uh, a quick stream the uh, call quick stream like uh, right right header like uh, but, but at a high level we think essentially we'll hand each packet up to the dispatcher it'll dispatch it to the quick codec and then the quick codec will yeah. spit out like the yes. HTTP codec does yeah I mean that's my that's my current thought is that we'll essentially hard code the listener so that we instantiate an HCM and then we'll have a quick codec and we'll just spit out the normal messages that it already expects. And I think everything else should mostly work. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, I don't have a like quick code deck, like uh, a detailed design. Uh, design yeah, that's yet. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, same as what you are. Uh, uh, what do you think? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and, uh, in the like in the. Uh, uh, 
uh, project planning uh, doc I shared before, uh, like uh, there's a quick codec session. Actually, uh, uh, there was a link about the change that I I, I tried to make in the past uh, about like what uh, how Envoy basically how Envoy HCM like Envoy uh, the stream the concept how yep. does that uh, interact with quick stream? But okay. we don't have quick stream like uh, de uh, being dependent on that yet. Okay. Um, so I, I guess just so I understand based on the current status, do we have like a very rough estimate of when, like when you're planning on having a proof of concept working? I mean, is that, I just don't like, is that one month away, like three months away? Uh, the reason that I'm asking is that I'm starting to think about the L4 hashing component. So I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a doc probably in the next couple of weeks of essentially finishing the the basic UDP proxy and then building a quick hashing component that would hash on connection ID. Uh, and that would allow people that don't have a hashing L4 load balancer to stand up an L4 Envoy that would hash on quick connection ID. And then it would forward the packets uh, to the backends that would actually do the L7 termination. So I I'm just trying to get a feel for, you know, it would be nice to align those things within a couple of months so that you know for people that want to do like a proof of concept alpha they could they could stand up the entire system uh so do you have an idea of when we could get like an end-to-end -end request yeah, or? Uh, for like for uh integration has that uh only support uh quick work on a single work thread yep I think we can have it like maybe in two months okay all right, cool. Yeah, I think that probably roughly aligns with the time frame in which I would be working on the end to end uh, L4 proxy stuff. So I think then what I'll do is I will target within a month to get a doc going where we can discuss what we want that L4 hashing component to look like. Um, and then I, I think that by then, hopefully we'll have, like you say, a simple end to end integration test. And my assumption is that you're going to work on enough client support so that we can do an integration test locally, right? Uh, yeah, that's actually something I I want to talk about now because uh, uh, just one blocker are for us to really have a quick, like to use a current quick client code, which is uh, uh, a GRL. Like uh, in in our quick code, we, use, uh, we, we just assume the third party. Uh, Sorry. Sorry, what's that? The G U I L. What is that? G well, I don't. I don't think we should. I don't think we should be aiming to use our existing quick client. Mm -hmm. I think that that with fairly minimal work, we should be able to to plug the codec yeah class into the client side. Yeah, that's my underneath the codec. It's we just use the quick client directly. Right? right. But when you still need oh the the underlying library code assumes that we have a URL class. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, if we use a codec. Yeah. Um. So, so maybe we maybe we need to talk about that. Yeah. I'm, oh. Yeah. I need to look more about whether we really need to. Uh, what I what I think is on the client side, we even it's okay not to use a codec at all, right? We just use a quick client and uh, make, tell quick client to give it a URL and it will send a request for you. Well, we I should. Think, I think, no, I think we really want to have, so so once we have, once we have like the actual codec class that takes like a packet and spits out streams, it should be pretty easy to, to use the existing Envoy uh, client test library rather than using the existing like quick, simple client. Yeah, and and that's that's where we want to go also because what, what we're going to do is on the Envoy mobile side, we're going to make that into a production quality implementation that does that does like TCP fallback and a bunch of other stuff. So anything that we can do on the integration test side to like get us to a non hacky solution so that we can have a proper client would be good. Obviously, we don't we don't expect you to, to do all of that production quality work for, for, for an integration test. Um, but it would be great to think through, you know, what would it take to to fit in within the existing Envoy concepts for client side? Yeah, so I don't I don't think like, if, if it gets you up and going faster, I think it's okay to have your like a first synthetic test land 
yep. with the, the Google simple quick client. But I think essentially um, we should be able to reuse 90% of the work we're doing for, yep. uh, for, for the, the Envoy codec abstraction to be able to just say, okay, create a codec and then use Envoy's yep. client and it'll yep. just spit out. Yeah, that's my that's my thinking also is that if we can make this work on the server side, we should be able to have a codec client that basically supports quick. And I and, and again, like I admit, I, I don't I, I don't know all the details, but it seems like with all the plumbing work that you're doing, um, it, it, it feels like it shouldn't be too bad. Mm, so um, like so basically Envoy will do the URL passing stuff and the um, just a call uh, quick stream interface. Yeah, I mean essentially the, the way that the Envoy abstractions work is you you have a the, the codec layer basically pulls in data and spits out streams. And so for server side, you know, we've talked about pulling data in from the socket and then handing it in the HCM, you know, through into the codec and the codec spits out streams. That code Again, with the minor differences for like client side, server side. So like, you know, okay, do I expect a, a URL and a method or do I expect a yep. status code or whatever? Like that same code is used in Envoy to create the Envoy test clients. So for GFE, like we have Jetstream and we have like a completely synthetic test client, but for Envoy, the codec class is used both on the server side and on the client side. So like once you've done that code, you're 90% of the way there to yep. having an Envoy test client. And and once we do that, like I said, once we move towards doing a, a production quality implementation for, for use in actual client side production traffic, the, the, the more work we can do to fit that into the existing codec client abstractions, it'll just get us closer to actually having that, having that work. Okay. Yeah. So, right, right. So, I mean, we don't like, we don't need to obviously figure that out right now. Um, but that's something that we should talk about and track towards. And that's something too, that I'm going to be spending significant, I'm going to increasingly spend time on quick in, in this half. Um, I'll be focusing again, mostly on the L4 portion now, because that's work that you both obviously are, are not doing. Um, and then once the L4 hashing component stuff is done and I finish UDP proxying, um, then I'll be available to help with, you know, like, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say like, essentially whatever, right? How different on the quick side, the client versus server codec is, but it could be that like, if, if uh, we land the server side, yep. you know, to yeah, yeah. Then, you know. Yeah, and, and and this actually comes back to some of the conversations that that we've had, where there is some overlap here in terms of how on the client side we might want to support happy eyeballs and like quick to TCP fallback and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. yeah, so I've got some ideas on how that might work. And again, like obviously the expectation is that both of you don't don't do that, but um, in so far as we can, you know, get closer to that direction that would be oh and i will say absolutely when you get to that point we'll want to sync up just yep. if not we have five years worth of lessons learned for you that you can uh, absolutely right um and 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 again like we'll be putting together design docs for all of that so yep. you know I, I don't expect to do any coding before we all review uh but 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 yeah so all right great um is there anything that we can be helping you both with that would make things go faster or do you feel like you're mostly unblocked at at this point uh, other than the GIR, I think uh, like uh, nothing is blocking us. Um, yeah, but it will be great if like because I have been creating some like uh, standalone issues. Yep. Uh, yeah, if someone can pick up, it will be great too. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the time frame that will happen. So let's just keep opening issues, and then we can obviously track those. The other um, thing is, it's worth calling out on the the Envoy UDP Slack channel because I know not everyone is on the call, yes. but there are some other people who are interested in helping out. So yep. yeah, and I, I think I I think most people are also on that mailing list, the Envoy Quick Dev. So mm -hmm. you can either post in Slack or you can reply or just send an email to that list if there's particular issues that you might want people to pick up. And like I said. Um, I think my initial focus is going to be on the L4 hashing component, mainly yeah. because everyone that isn't Google doesn't have that. So, I, I mean, for, for anyone other than Google to do a production quick deployment, they will all have to have this thing. Um, so I would like to get that going. Just, just Again, just, just calling out, I do think it's super worthwhile to do. Um, when, when we hit prod initially and were deployed and, and live, I think we made it all the way to Chrome stable, just hashing based on IP port. Really? Doable? Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Okay. I, yeah. I just, essentially, I just essentially what we did, 
work? We addressed at client side and basically said, if you're getting bad QOE due to port rebinding, you just disable quick and then you latch it. Uh, so the where you had common port rebinding, you okay. disable quick. So I think, I think once we did all that stuff, we got okay. from we got an extra 5% penetration or something, which is okay. good. Right? And it's people's yeah. priming networks, but you can totally okay. like, use quick without it as long as you've got the client side. Right, to right, right, right. You know, it, it's something that I think I want to do anyway, just because anyway. It, it, it'll cover the basic UDP proxy case also, which is something that people have been asking for. So also for anyone who has deployment of transparent proxy, you absolutely want that yeah. because one of the biggest QA gains we got was when we stopped rejecting Quake at our transparent proxies and just threw forward yes. with it. Yep. A huge difference. Yeah. Plus it was a nightmare dealing with it. So yep. yeah. Okay. Cool well, doing, I'm just saying like it's, it's not as critical as you would think as long Got as it. side works, which took a while. Interesting. Okay. I just assumed that it just basically wouldn't work. Um, but all right. That's good to know. Yeah. It, it does actually depend on um, what timeout you're using. So uh, you can use a much, much longer idle timeout if you're willing to do better flow hashing. If you're yeah. Doing community-based hashing. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. So if you're willing to use a 30-second idle timeout like Chrome does currently, then it doesn't, now rebindings are actually extraordinarily rare on that time. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But intuitively, if if you haven't done a lot of UDP before, you could assume that a lot of people have hard coded like thirty second timeouts, even if traffic's flowing through, which turned out to not be the case. So. Yep. Okay. Well, you know what? I like I said, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to write a small doc on, on this topic, and we can just discuss there. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. Awesome. Um, thank you. That that fully answered my questions. Uh, is there anything that anyone else wanted to chat about on the quick side? Um, that's pretty much it. I yeah, I think other things we can discuss after we have the uh, integration test. Oh, sorry. There is one other thing that I wanted to point out. Um, just so everyone is aware, there's a group of people that are moving forward with trying to get Envoy working with Open SSL versus boring SSL. <laughs> uh, now, now, so before we all uh, freak out, here's here's what I'll say. Um, what we have said is that we are not going to support open SSL in the main repo. We will only support boring SSL. Um, the other thing that has happened is that um, what, what this group is doing is that they are where it makes sense. They're trying to put in an abstraction layer to basically abstract um, you know, abstract boring SSL and open SSL from the underlying, from, from basically the TLS needs. Um, my standpoint is that I don't want any of you to be blocked on trying to get quick working in any way with open SSL. Like we will just assume that it's boring SSL only. And essentially what we'll do is just if it'll be up to them, if they want to try to get it working until then we can just completely disable quick on an open Especially, SSL. I build. don't think you can. I mean, given that boring SSL has this custom yeah. host in the, right. in the no FIPS build. And actually I thought that the, the having quick disabled in the no FIPS build or as much as we need to might be a yep. really good thing to make sure it like that yep. we do write on the compile it out because yep. the boring SSL people are going to want to have it compiled yep. out. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so basically I just, I just wanted to, warn you all that this is happening and just make sure that you understand that there's no expectation in any way that you support open SSL. So like feel free just to move forward to just like assuming that boring SSL is the is the only thing. But I just bring it up because you might see PRs or you might see people commenting in, in, in certain ways and feel free to push back. Yeah, I brought it up within uh, with regards to the uh, the FIP stuff. Yep. And I was like, well, it's it's a you know blessing in disguise because that we will make yep. sure we break the open SSL stuff. Yep. Okay. Great. Cool. People want, are trying to bring all the cooking trays into open SSL. Oh, interesting. Cool. <laughs> well, again, I think I think that's something that they could totally do, and that's something that we we totally have not signed on for. But yep. I think you know if they exactly. do, if it work, it'd be cool. Yeah. So like if. If they want to do the work to, to make it work with OpenSSL, they can absolutely do that. But I just I just don't want us to spend time supporting that because we'll just stop progress. Actually, out of curiosity, what were the hooks in Google Quick? Do you know? Is it just like zero RTT? I think it's zero RTT. Zero RTT stuff? Okay. Or is there something else? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's all zero RTT because um, 
supporting SSL implements TLS 1.3, but it does not. Oh, it's the, it's the 1.3 stuff. Okay. It doesn't implement uh, 1.3 with Zero HTT yet. This is the last time I checked. Got it. Okay. And have to rich solves in the last. Week so two. essentially, tip of tree tip of tree works for for the 1.3 T. Okay. Uh, cool. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else that anyone else wanted to chat about? Uh, I guess I'll just give a quick reminder that uh, the CFPs for Envoy Con are uh, due July 12th, so in like two weeks, so or one and a half weeks. So if anyone wants to do a proposal or needs help, I am actually, it would be super awesome to have a proposal <laughs> on the quiche stuff. Uh, so if, if any of you are interested in doing a talk on just the, the quick integration work, that would be, I think, really interesting. So I would encourage you to do a, do a proposal for that. I'll fill them in on, on details. Yeah, they look, they look very skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did an on talk. How do you That's work right. Yes. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, does anyone, I guess, have anything else? Oh, uh, another thing is like uh, while figuring out the uh, fake mode stuff, like I realized in the uh, quick lesson that I talk, probably I need to make some case about it because, uh, uh, as Alisa said, we want we want to uh, want, we want the uh, Envoy core to still build without quick dependency, and yep. not, that's not considered in the design talk. So I will. Uh, make some change to um, make the listener stuff. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, and and you know on that topic, we can we can do it in the simplest way possible, which might just be that if someone specifies a config and it's not compiled in, it just basically throws an error. Like we don't we don't need to do anything intelligent or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Great. Okay. Thank you all for coming and giving that update. <laughs>